Hey y'all, it's Nancy, the Handy Scandy. Welcome back for another crafty venture. Today I'm participating in the Pumpkins on Parade video hop and giveaway with Whimsy Stamps. They have graciously invited me back to be a guest designer for this project, and I couldn't have had more fun creating this banner. So if you were expecting a card, that's okay. Brace yourself, put this on pause, grab a Jolt of Joe, come right back and we'll jump right into this process. We are starting out by using the Build a Pumpkin Patch die set. I'm showing you that I've already misplaced one of the teeny tiny dies that contains a couple of the leaves, but I'll find it. And I have this Scallop Banner Penance Pack from my stash, as well as the sh gorgeous Shiplap background stamp and the Trees Assortment die set, which has become an integral part of my scene building as well as the Daisy Slimline Embossing Folder, another essential. And you can see that I am adding ink directly to the embossing folder on the indented side. That way the raised daisies will remain white and the surrounding areas will become the color of the ink. Here you can see the shiplap and I love it. I've used it on off-white cardstock for the pumpkins as well as in a darker ink on the pennants, which you'll see here in just a second. I die cut the pumpkins with the pattern going side to side as well as up and down to have some variety and I did it actually the same on the pennants. So here I'm also cutting the pumpkins from the daisies background and I will be die cutting the trees and the treescapes from some Bristol Smooth cardstock. Here you go. And then I ink this up in a variety of autumnal colors and I use a pretty heavy hand because these are really dainty images and I need them to pop off the patterns of the pumpkins. So we needed some bold color so they can hold their own. So we'll just watch that process. You can see that pretty autumnal color palette with the oranges and the browns, the reds, the greens, the yellows. It's so, so pretty. And they're just beautiful. Again, these have become essentials in my stash, guys. So here I'm adding some distressing to the edges of both the banners and the pumpkins. And I do it in a couple shades of brown and then in a warm pumpkin-y orange to create that pretty autumnal glow on each piece. And I pop them up on each other just to kind of audition them, if you will. So while I'm doing that, let me tell you about this hop. So, like I said, I'm participating with Whimsy Stamps in the Pumpkins on Parade Hop and Giveaway. Each stop in the hop is sharing a project featuring the Whimsy Stamps Build a Pumpkin Patch die set, plus, as you can see, a few other pro products that we're going over and have truly, truly become essentials in my stash, and I can't live without them at this point. It's funny how you don't know you need something until you've got it, and then you don't know how you lived without it. Yeah, that's me and these products. <laughs> so anyway, I digress. I want you to be sure to hop along to each stop in the hop for a chance to win a $25 gift card to Whimsy Stamps. And of course, it's sponsored by Whimsy Stamps. So we will be picking one winner at random via YouTube random comment picker. So you want to make sure to leave a comment on every video along this hop and you're going to see some great inspiration. So we will announce the winner on the Whimsy Stamps YouTube channel on the Pumpkins on Parade Hop video description box. So you want to make sure that you are subscribed to Whimsy Stamps as well as the other designers on this hop just so that you are alerted to any new videos as well as especially to the announcement on the winner. So let's get back to, to the pennant making, right? So I have kind of auditioned my pennants as well as all the bits and pieces. I'm alternating the direction of the shiplap pattern on both the pennants as well as the trees. And I'm also alternating the patterns on the pumpkins because some of them are shiplap and some of them are daisies. So here I am just simply gluing down the trees and the treescapes to the pumpkins. Again, alternating, right? So that there's balance and it's aesthetically pleasing. So one pumpkin will have just the trees and another will have the treescapes. And I'm using my, um, just some liquid glue as well as my tweezers to add a little bit of lift and dimension to some of those branches. And then I take my scissors and I fussy cut around the edges of those treescapes so that we maintain that, that sweet little fun pumpkin shape. And I think that's just adorable. 
and then I'm going to mount each pumpkin up on some double-sided foam tape for a little bit more dimension and then I place them down on each pennant centered near the bottom by the scallop. Now that is going to allow some room at the top for the lace that I'm going to use. It could be for any other element that you might choose to use on your banners and, and pennants. You might want to have your lace go in front like I do so that it does add an element to the banner or you can have it go behind so that it doesn't distract. So again I was auditioning my layout, assessing for balance and order and all of that and I've chosen my lace which this was a difficult process I'm just I'm not going to tell you all about it but it was hard to choose because I have this big bucket full of laces and twines and all kinds of things so yeah this decision making was difficult but I have this gorgeous lace and I'm just feeding it through and I I start feeding from the back and I pull it through to the front because I do want that lace to be an element you see how it adds that nice little border at the top I really like that I like that touch a lot so you just have to decide what you want on your banner and then that will determine which direction you're going to feed your um, your ribbon or lace or whatever it is that you're going to hold your pendants together with that's how you decide whether you want it to be an element or you want it to be a, a hidden feature so then I just spend some time fussing and fidgeting and fluffing <laughs> and getting all of my lace straight and untangled and I make sure that each pennant is evenly spread apart so again I mean we make things so that they're aesthetically pleasing right we want them to please our eyes and to please the recipient if it's a card or whatever otherwise you know yes it's all always about the process but when we want the product to be right we're going to spend that extra time with the fussing and the fluffing and the fidgeting and <laughs> all of those things and to be honest it looks like it may have taken a while if we've got that whole time lapse situation but it didn't take that long to do this and it's actually very satisfying so I use just a little bit of hot glue on each end so that the ribbon or the lace stays in place and then I put just a little bit of dab of the hot glue right behind the lace on the front so that it stays in place there as well. So just little dabs of the hot glue. You can use any glue that works best for you but for me the hot glue was it because it, it dries immediately. So now once you have everything glued in place, it's all spaced properly, everything is where it needs to be, then it's time to add embellishments. And so for me, that means lots of ribbons and threads and flosses and twines and jutes. <laughs> and I just bundle them together. I color coordinate them. I don't worry about patterns. I don't worry about textures, except to say that I want a variety. I like all of it and it just adds that much more interest and character to your banner at least I think so but whatever your style is is what your style is you can make this in any any way you can add as many or as few as what pleases your taste your sensibilities your style I like them long and tenderly so when you see the final product you're gonna see that mine are really long for some people that might just be too much and that's okay you do you make it the way you want it so you can keep them short and sparse you can add buttons you can add stars sequins bows you can add extra dangly pumpkins or leaves in between each one you can skip the ribbons altogether. you can put additional elements in between each pennant um, you can add trees or leaves or different sized pumpkins in between. You can fill that space with an individual pumpkin that's not on a pennant. I mean, guys, the sky is the limit. Or you can keep the ribbons and add maybe beads and charms. Or maybe you don't want to use a pennant at all and you just want your shape. Maybe it's um, gingerbread men maybe you're gonna make one for Christmas and it's all gingerbread men they don't have to be attached to a pennant the sky is the limit so here is my finished project I love it it is on my mantle in my living room I'm sorry that the pictures are a little dark <laughs> 
but I think it's gorgeous. All right, guys, so the next creator is listed below in the description box. Be sure you hop along to each one for some great inspiration. But remember, you have to leave a comment so that you're eligible to win, right? More comments equals more chances. So in your comment here, tell me what your style is or what you think your style is or what you might like it to be, <laughs> what occasion you might make a banner for, and what whimsy products you think you could use to customize your banner for your specifics, right? Do you want to make a Christmas banner? Go look at the whimsy products and see what they have. Look at your products. What's in your stash? How might you be able to make a banner specific to you? All right, guys. So this is Nancy, the Handy Scandy guest designing for Whimsy Stamps on the Pumpkins on Parade video hop and giveaway. Be sure you leave that comment downstairs. Like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you're not already a member of my crafty tribe and hop on to the next person listed down below. Thanks guys. I'm out.